Nick, did you have an interesting snack? I'll bring it over. Oh. <laughs> He's taking it very seriously now. The Black Mosaic, which is run by Mia, who you can see there. Um, it's a really cool initiative that she started up. Uh, okay. So the experimenting thing, this sort of stems from 1960s art schools. So this kind of boom of experimentalism, basically, in art schools. They go off into other fields. It's not just about art. Crashing together ideas from different places to explore the broadest possible concept of what being an artist might be. And one of the ideas that I like from this was burning the box of beautiful things. The box of beautiful things is basically like all of that weight of tradition um, and, and how things have gone before and what you're supposed to do. And the idea that beauty is the most important thing uh, is burning up all of that. So an artist might be somebody who produces a sculpture one day and then they produce some photography and then they might do a painting and then they might do a machine or a performance and all of those things. And they're held together by the fact that it's the one artist doing those things. And then I wanted you to think about what would this mean for you? Um, for one of them, it's just like not caring what others think. Pretentious vocab. It's like knowing the outcome before you start something. Get rid of that because I feel like that is kind of holding you back. Success in terms of like either monetary success or specifically like successful feedback, like positive feedback. I find that when I'm painting, I will be so uh, upset with how it's looking, even though it's like nowhere near finished. Uh -huh. And I'll either put it off for a while or I'll just try and work extra hard to make sure it's like not in this phase where it looks really bad. <laughs> I'm laughing because basically you might just do it next to all of them and, and that's it. On the one hand, it's a corny Nike slogan. And also it's the best bit of advice that we ever have. It's the second best bit of advice that we ever have about creativity. And then next to it, I wrote flow because perfectionism, I guess, comes about when you keep thinking about what you're doing. And when you just sit there and let it happen, I feel like that would prevent that. Do you know how you can get into that flow state? I do not, but I would like to know. So you think of art and stuff you make as a, just a trigger for experiences rather than being a container for some kind of message that you're trying to convey. But now it's just, we're constantly putting things out there sometimes you know, igniting new ideas and passions. Um, but sometimes, almost beyond your control as well, then they fizzle out, it doesn't happen. The thing that you thought was going to be the exciting thing you were throwing out into the world didn't really catch anywhere. And some other thing that you threw out just kind of randomly then suddenly did get attention. That's how it works. Random sparks, millions of them. I just wrote down personal power. No, that's good. It's simple and clear. This then reminded me oh yeah again the experimental thing thing about experimentation i got the book based on the title now try something weirder because i think it's an interesting idea that like when you're making a thing you tend to sort of want to fit within what that thing is but then the risk is you just go too normal so you're just doing something that's not interesting enough and the way it becomes more interesting is if you actually do something a bit weird things where you, th you think as the person making it, you're kind of pushing it a bit too far and you're being a bit too weird. Actually, people can absorb that quite well, I think. And if you do a painting of a person and their face has got surprising slabs of blue and yellow on it, it looks good. People don't think, oh, you're really stupid. People's faces aren't blue or yellow. And I think at least if something is getting rejected for being a bit weird, it is better than being rejected for being too dull, isn't it? As always, you might think, why is he making me write these things down? But it's through the process of externalizing it and thinking about it and writing it down, it, it is worth doing. You might think, I can just think this in my mind, but actually writing it down is better. Don't ask me why. I'll tell you why, but I'm not going to. And you put strong constraints on what you're doing, but then it potentially makes it much more interesting. It's kind of more of a challenge and also may lead to more interesting results because you, you, you put a frame around it that makes it in some ways harder and in some ways more interesting. And she said this, this was good. When creating music, again, this would apply to anything else, certainly apply to visual arts or anything. Focus on how you want it to feel and not on what a particular button does. You can easily get hung up on like technology and details and, and skills, but actually thinking about how the thing feels much more important. That's Heather. Yeah, um, with because uh, I work primarily in sound and audio as well. Uh -huh. um, and I find that I constantly have to have like, like kind of like almost like a mental cue cards of random facts for people to believe that I'm in sound. 
it's like, yeah, I use, I use Pro Tools. I know how that works. There's a record button there, <laughs> you know, like, and then they're like, oh, so you really are in sound. Like it takes, it takes a few layers for them to believe it. It talks about like this concept called habit stacking. So if you want to do something, you put a habit that you like doing on top, like before or after it. Did Sam, Sam Sturmer, did you talk about that once? Uh, about parking? Habits, habit yeah, stacking. I love habits. Um, Habits are my favorite thing because it makes doing everything so easy since it's just like a natural thing you do. It's really about like visual cues and like controlling your environment. And so when I would come back, I would see it and be like, hmm, maybe I'll do that, you know, versus like if it's hidden away and then like it's never in your mind. It's so cool. I love habits. Because resistance is a force of nature and acts objectively, it is in no way your fault. Resistance is in you, but resistance is not you. Resistance is like breathing and there's no doing without it. Seeing resistance is just this thing that happens that you're going to need to overcome. You don't need to feel shame about the fact that it's there. It's not your fault. Everybody has it. It, it probably doesn't look like that for you. What does resistance look like to you? This is a good task. My microphone isn't working very sad. Fair enough. Okay, look, I'll go. Uh, I did that. Oh, I haven't done this before. I'm, I'm quite interested in what I did. I'm just kind of constant tired all the time from everything and that kind of holds me back it's really bad but like it's just basically oh, yeah. Fun. yeah nice i just put like stars and like motion signals around my head because that's like how my head just feels like it's spinning and see you next week <laughs>